Hello everyone, welcome to the series questions and answers based on the course Computational Finance. Today we have question number 15 uh, out of 30 and this question is based on lecture number 6. The question is as follows. Why is adding more and more factors to the pricing model not the best idea? Suppose you have a pricing model and you would like to increase its uh, flexibility then obviously you would say, okay, let me just introduce some additional stochastic factors in my model. Like for example, by letting your parameters to be simply stochastic. What are the limitations of such a choice? Why would you maybe, why would it be the best idea to do that? And there are a few considerations to take into account before you are starting uh, make your model more involved, more advanced. And of course, uh, this means also more richer in, uh, in terms of uh, stochastic drivers and stochastic parameters or in general parameters. So there are a few um, critical points that you always need to consider once you, cons uh, once you take a model and you want to add more factors. The first one is the overfitting problem. So uh, we have already learned in this course and also in general we know from statistics that um, if we have a number of points and we want to fit through all of those points by uh, choosing, uh, by increasing number of your polynomial, you will always make your polynomial fit better. However, the predicting power of such a, of such a model will be limited. This means that there is no information about your performance of the model once you are not pass, you are not fitting perfectly uh, all the points. Uh, in finance, this is also very critical, and this is also related to the concept of uh, uh, homogenic parameters. Uh, suppose you have perfect calibration today and tomorrow market data changes and your model has completely different model parameters. This suggests that your model is not really, uh, it's very insensitive and it doesn't have the homogeneity feature. This is very worrisome for traders where the, every day the parameter changes a lot. This means that it's typically not the best model. Um, then another question is whether uh, we are able to find the corresponding currency function. Uh, and this is also related to the next point, is the model affine? If you make parameters uh, stochastic, you allow the model to be of a higher dimension, uh, and we consider case when we want to price our model, calibrate our model, and typically we calibrate models by evaluating uh, multiple times op models for options, and then comparing those options to the market quotes, we calibrate our model parameters. It is very important that we can do it very fast. The reason for that is that uh, the models, uh, ideally, they will be used for pricing of some exotic derivatives. Therefore, in order to price exotic derivatives, we need to calibrate to European type of options that will naturally be used as the hedging instruments of the exotic derivative. This means that if we would like to find optimal parameters, we need to find, uh, we need to price those options many, many times and for many different parameter set configurations. Uh, this means that it is very important that we are able to find the characteristic function and this characteristic function is uh, uh, it we can evaluate it very efficiently and uh, we have already learned in this lecture in this uh, course that uh, the affinity conditions are very strict uh, especially the covariance metric so if we make uh, higher dimensions uh, of our model likely we will not uh, meet the criterion of uh, affinity. So if we make your parameters stochastic, uh, very likely you will uh, encounter a problem that your model is not uh, affine. And this means that you will not be able to find the Kirsty function. Uh, on the other hand, if we think about uh, um, models and what parameters to, uh, to cast, um, are important for calibration, it's always about the volatility. Because if we talk about options, the options are driven by volatility. So we always talk about uh, volatility processes and those are very limited. They have very limited capability of making the parameters stochastic. So in general, it is very difficult uh, to, ex to add extra factor for volatility um, such that you will benefit uh, in the terms of uh, calibration. There are, for example, variants like uh, a double Heston model, which introduces additional factor for the variance. However, those model and models are not very successful because they are not having enough flexibility. So the flexibility uh, is not there. Uh, 
in the lecture, I'm explaining the reasons for that. This is maybe outside of this question. Uh, here we'll focus why it is not the best idea. And one of these problems is the affinity constraint. Very likely the model will not be affine. Or if the model is affine, very likely you will not be able to gain sufficient uh, amount of flexibility in order to calibrate to the market data. Uh, as related to the previous point, how to hedge the parameters, this is about homogeneity. Uh, every time when we recalibrate our model uh, every day, um, ideally we would like to have parameters stable in time. So we don't want to have a lot of fluctuations in the model, and that's typically the, the problem with uh, overfitting, where we have uh, uh, when the model perfectly matches the data, data slightly moves, and everything in the model changes. Uh, so it is preferred maybe more to have a little bit of error in the calibration, however, has, have, um, to have homogeneity in the, in the model parameters, such that you can observe evolution of the model parameters and also maybe hedge them. Uh, another point is that if we have if we don't consider a case of uh, calibration, so suppose you, you are stubborn and you like to calibrate your mod model with Monte Carlo, you don't want to go via FFT, then you still need to make sure that if you add extra factors, that you'll be able to price uh, your exotic derivative or you'll be able to perform Monte Carlo simulation uh, uh, efficiently. If we increase number of dimensions of your stochastic model, then uh, then naturally that will reduce, uh, the, that will make it uh, your evaluation of your model much more complex. And that will mean also it is computationally much more expensive. Uh, this means the calibration will be slower and also the exotic um, derivative, um, especially if we talk about sensitivities, the risks, then adding maybe more factors, it is not the best idea. So always, if you add extra factor, uh, first think what you want to achieve um, whether it is actually makes sense. I have seen many articles and also many students uh, try to make parameters stochastic. They are happy they managed to make the, some parameters stochastic. However, at the end, uh, the impact of those stochast the stochasticity in the model was not sufficient. This means that if you make your parameters stochastic, always check what is the actually overall impact of the implied volatility shapes. Do, did you actually gain more flexibility in your model? Can model generate more skew, more extreme type of uh, volatility surfaces that uh, would be uh, compared to the uh, case where you have a constant parameter? So this is always something to be uh, analyzed. Adding more factors is not always the best case. There are scenarios indeed where you can see that there are benefits of that. However, there is always a cost to be paid. There are, however, cases where it is important to add extra factors. Uh, those cases are, for example, associated with hybrid models. Suppose we have a Heston model and we would like to price a derivative, an exotic derivative that involves equity, stock, but also stochastic interest rates. There could be, for example, payoff that involves multiple asset classes. Then adding stochasticity into your interest rate uh, part it is actually essential. So uh, it is important that if you add models, if you add stochastic differential equations, if you make some parameters stochastic, always focus or always analyze what is the objective, what you like to achieve. If you have a Heston model and you add stochastic interest rates, but your objective is only to price European type of options, that can be pointless. However, if you have advanced derivative that involves multiple asset classes, interest rates and stocks and equities, then indeed by adding additional degrees of freedom uh, in terms of stochastic interest rates, it is very important to have it. So sometimes it is actually necessary to add extra factors. Everything depends on the objectives of what is your exotic derivative that you wish to price. I hope it explains everything. If you have more questions, please write them in the comments. See you next time, guys.